Today I am in Dronfield, which is just outside Sheffield. I'm at West Special Fasteners. Now, before we learn about their recent investment in brand new machines from GM CNC, we're going to find out a little bit more about the company and the processes involved in making their components. Sonia, before we tour the company and the different elements of what you're, you're doing here, can you maybe give us a very quick overview of West Special Fasteners when you were formed and what your, what your specialist subject is? Yes, certainly. So West Special Fasteners was formed in 1999. Started from very humble beginnings and just grew ourselves up slowly. Um, we're a specialist manufacturer in non-standard fasteners. Um, and we currently now have premises of 28,000 square feet. Uh, we've got over 50 staff working for us. And you export your product as well as support the domestic market? We do indeed. So we export to many countries in Europe and also in the US and Australia. And when you say a fastener, for those that don't know, what I mean, what is a fastener? OK, so a fastener, you could say a hexagon bolt, hexagon nut, socket cap screw, a socket counter sunk. They're the sort of items that we would generally specialise in making on a day-to-day -day basis. OK, now this is really, in a lot of uh, senses, where the process starts, isn't it, in the factory we're in now? Yes. Can you tell us what's happening behind you? Yeah, so what's happening behind us, so as soon as we receive an order and process it, um, we will then cut the bar into slugs ready to manufacture the fastener and the majority of fasteners that we manufacture are via the forging process. So behind us, we're heating up the slugs of the material. We're actually putting them into a die, which then shapes the head as the forging press comes down um, and places all the material into the die, which, for instance, will form it into a hexagon head. OK, well, I mean, forgive the question. Some might think, is it not easier just to take a bit of bar and turn that complete rather than going through the forging process? Yeah, it's a very good question, but what we find is because we're manufacturing so many different materials, some of them being quite expensive materials, for instance, Alloy 718, the advantage of hot forging is rather than using um, a piece of bar that has to be big enough to cover the head of the fastener, you can actually use a um, bar that is actually the same size as the diameter of the thread of the fastener. So therefore, you've got much less wastage and your material costs are much, much lower. And, and what about the integrity of the finished part as well? Do your customers prefer it if they're forged rather than just turn complete? In quite a lot of cases, they do, because you will actually find um, a headed forged product actually strengthens the grain flow um, of the materials which can actually make the product a lot stronger um, and also with regards to the integrity of forging we are specialists in hot forging uh, it's something we've done over 20 years uh, we have great experience and we know how to ensure that we have full integrity of that product And this is where it all started as well, isn't it? I mean, you're still using some of the machines here that, that were first brought into the company. That's right. So when we first incorporated in 1999, uh, we literally just had a few caps and lathes and a forging press. Um, but today, they are still very, very useful because we're dealing in a lot of tough materials. It just helps us to be a lot more flexible with our manufacturing. That, that's a, a question from me as well, really, because you've got some quite sophisticated CNCs, which we'll take a look at shortly. How do these machines do a better job, or what, what areas are they serving you better than the CNC? Yeah, so the capstan lathes um, are very useful because we specialise in hot forging. So if you imagine what we were just speaking about before, um, You've got to forge blank. You've then got to carry out the rest of the machining on it. Um, and when the materials are very tough, there's a lot of flexibility with your capstan lathes, with your speeds and your feeds. Um, and it sometimes can be easier to manufacture them depending on the toughness of the material. And I suppose in a lot of senses, 
you, you, you've got a lot of guys here that are, I mean, there's a lot of operators involved in the process. So is that, is that not an expensive way of doing it or is it still, you need that skill uh, and on this type of machine? Yeah, the, the skills are really important. Um, we do need engineers that know how to, to operate the CNCs and work on the different kinds of materials. And today we, we still find that important. We've recently invested in some new apprentices who are actually learning the old school engineering processes. And, and how, how many fasteners go through the factory in a week or a month? Is there an, oh, a rough so, estimation? So it really, it really depends because components are very different depending on the orders that come through. But in a typical week, you could, for instance, have um, 5,000 components going through the shop floor. So that was the machines that helped you start the company. And you've moved into some CNC as well more recently, haven't you? It's quite some shop you have here. It certainly is, yes. We've, we've invested heavily in CNCs over the last few years. Um, and obviously, um, this week, we've just had two more CNCs delivered. And the CNCs that you use, I mean, interestingly, there's no aluminium being cut around here, or none that I can see. Often machine shops we go in, the majority of them are machining softer materials, but that's very different, isn't it, for you? Very different indeed, yes. We've always specialised in non-standard materials, so anything from stainless steel or better. Um, one of the biggest trades that we manufacture here is the Super Duplex UNSS32760. And how do the machines that you have handle them? I mean, you've got two new Victor V-turns behind you. They're quite small machines, but obviously very capable then of handling the, the harder materials. They are very capable. They're, they're really, really good machines. They're very reliable um, and they, they do the work that we need them to do. And it's, a lot of it is also down to the operator as well. And it's that engineering experience again with the feeds and the speeds which enables you to get the best out of the CNC's. Because a lot of the forgings that we would have seen at the start of this interview then come into here, don't they? That's and then right. maybe you're just turning the diameters, machining the faces. Is that predominantly the operations that are happening in here? I mean, is this where they become a finished part? Yes, it, it can be. It's a mixture, really. So as we do specialise in hot forging, a lot of the blanks will come in here to be finished off into a finished part. Um, but also we do manufacture a lot of items from scratch from oversized bar also. So it just depends on the situation and, and the price of the raw material as to which way is the most cost effective way for the customer. And cutting the parts is one thing, but what about the precision? How important and how tied up are some of these fasteners? Or, or, is, or is it more about you know, delivering a solid, secure product? Is the tight tolerances? It's it's everything really. Um, we are working to a lot of customer drawings, and they, they can be very tight tolerances specified on there. Um, and these machines work perfectly. Um, we we can manufacture the items easily to the tolerances that are required. And to conclude our trip, then um, we're in this unit here, which looks to me like it's kind of an assembly dispatch area, is that correct? That's right, yes. So we found that, to be honest, we were struggling with the room that we'd got. So we've, we've recently got this new unit at the end and we're now able to space everything out and it's just a much better packing area for us. So what would happen in here? What are the processes? I mean, I see we've got inspection and, and et laser etching as well. Is that all of the, the things that happen just before you get ready to go to the customer? That's right, yes. So once the products are manufactured, they will then go through to the inspector and he will inspect um, against the specification. The, the customer may want additional testing, so for instance, PMI testing. We have two PMI guns on site, so we can mean? do that. So that's positive material identification. So literally by using the PMI gun, within a few seconds, you can actually see what grade of the material that product actually is. Right, so that, that then leads on for the customer to, to have the traceability of what you're, you're that's, supplying. That's correct. So it's just that confirmation that they know 100% that they're getting the grade that they asked for. And I do love what I see here, that certainly the finished assembly that we were talking about earlier, I mean, that's a very long part, isn't it? I mean, where, where and what is that going to do? 
Yeah, that's that's right. So we're currently doing a lovely project um, for an oil and gas company, um, entertaining for some very long studs which will go um, subsea. Um, and they were very challenging to manufacture because the plain portion had to be a much smaller diameter than the thread, but they're a very long component. And quite a few of them by the looks of it as well. Quite a few of them as well, um, together with nuts and washers to complement them, but yes. And it's been, it's been brilliant to have a look around and see the processes that happen here in making fasteners. It's good to see that you're servicing the domestic, but also at the export market. How are things for you and how have they been in the last 18 months with the pandemic that we've been through? Brexit, that would have an impact for you, uh, I would imagine. Where is the company at the moment? And how are things looking? The company's doing really well, to be honest. It, it was a frightening time um, with regards to COVID and Brexit, but because we have such a good sales team and an experienced sales team, we're just always there to support the customers. And they've stuck with us because they understand the in integrity of the products we're manufacturing. And for the year ahead, 2021? Yeah, we're, we're hoping it's going to be a good year. So we've secured some good orders already. Um, we've obviously invested in new machinery, um, as you know. So we've also actually invested in the environment as well. So we've actually recently installed some solar panels, which will really decrease our carbon footprint. Um, and it will also help us on our uh, energy bills also. You didn't install them yourself up there, did you? I didn't, know. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time today, Sonia. It's been a pleasure to walk around and learn more about what you do here. Terrific business. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much.